If you're a small business owner, you might get angry that the Facebook ad you paid $5 for didn't work all that well. But imagine some chief marketing officer out there when he realized that short of making the company money, his marketing mistake actually cost his company millions. I'm Jonathan from Be Amazed, and here are the 10 worst promotions that lost companies millions. Number 10, the Apple YouTube giveaway. You've all probably heard of this one, the story that made YouTube into a meme for years to come. But for those who don't know, let's explain it a bit. Apologies in advance for YouTube fans. Back in 2014, some genius at Apple came up with the idea that people would love to have their new products come pre-packaged with an album that no one really cared about. Now you must be thinking, this is just a simple giveaway, why is it here at all? Well, aside from the annoyance it caused for people logging into iTunes for the first time, there also exists a magical thing called royalties. Apple reportedly paid an undisclosed fee in royalties to U2 and also committed a whopping 100 million in marketing campaigns for the band to promote their new album. As shocking as this is, they even stepped in to defend the promotion and the band which led to some undesired responses within various online communities. Nevertheless, Apple seems to still be bitter from their mistake because they got rid of a headphone jack. Number 9. Walker's Weather Promotion Quick! When I say British weather, what comes to your mind first? If you answered rain, then you're probably smarter than the guys running marketing for Walker's Crisps. The story goes as follows. Some genius decided that people would have fun predicting the weather if they could win a prize for it. So Walker's Crisp decided to pay their faithful customers 10 pounds if they correctly guessed where the rain would fall on a grid map of the UK. Of course, they weren't that stupid as they charged everyone that cost a packet of crisps 40 pence to have a go. But as you've probably guessed, offering a 25-fold return to anyone who can guess the climate of a country with fairly predictable weather patterns, it's a great deal. Rain kept pouring during the time of the promotion and walkers bravely followed through with their promises at great cost. After the contest was over, Walker's Crisps had to pay £660,000 in £10 payments to cover the entire contest. But to be quite honest, you could argue that it ended up working as a marketing promotion since it made people remember the name Walker's Crisps for years to come. They even got some free promotion in this video. Number 8. Balloon Fest of 86 For some people, the word balloon will cause them to have a flashback to the time United Way decided to release 1.5 million balloons over Cleveland and screwed up. Badly. The whole stunt had a neat little idea behind it. Basically, they just wanted to do a little fundraiser and grab the town's attention for a while. They built a giant box the size of one city block and had 2,500 students do the balloon filling while they waited for the crowds to gather. Once the launch started, it was one of the most beautiful things you could see for about a few minutes. You see, nobody actually accounted for the fact that wind exists and therein lies their downfall, literally. The one and a half million balloons started falling to the ground and causing massive damage. They clogged the streets, waterways, and pretty much every nook and cranny of the town. If this wasn't bad enough, the balloons were blamed for the death of two fishermen who were found drowned two days later after the balloons interrupted Coast Guard attempts to rescue them. In fact, one of the fishermen's wives sued the company for three million, but settled for an undisclosed amount. In the aftermath, United Way ended up paying millions to the city and the cleanup crews not to mention settling lawsuits from various citizens who were damaged by the balloons. To think that the Persians in the 300 movie used arrows to blot out the sun. What a waste. They should have just gotten United Way to plan their attack. Number 7. Jägermeister's Pool of Death Okay, I admit it. The title is a bit too much, but it's not that far from the truth. This, again, goes to show that marketers sometimes don't know the basics. In this edition, we go over chemistry. Some genius in the marketing department decided that they'll make a giant pool party for all of Jägermeister's drunken fans, which is a good start, honestly. But then, they wanted to have a lot of fog above the pool for that added effect, which, again, is quite nice. However, what was not really nice was the liquid nitrogen they used to create the fog by pouring it into the water. Now this is the bad part. The liquid nitrogen basically made an unbreathable fog above the whole area when it came into contact with the water. And the marketing team must have been shocked upon realizing that humans need air to survive. This whole event was a mess and actually left one party goer in a coma while hospitalizing eight others. 
Jägermeister never actually disclosed how much they had to cough up for this mistake, but considering they put some poor guy in a coma, we can assume that it was a lot. Just goes to show if you want to play smoke on the water, don't go overboard with the chemicals. Number 6. The Energizer Bunny now, how could a cute little bunny screw up a company that much? Well, do me a favor and tell me the brand of batteries you have in your remote. Don't have a clue? That's what I thought. And that's what the marketing team at Energizer realized after it was a bit too late. While the bunny is actually a cute little mascot and is probably known amongst you young whippersnappers here, you can't really pull off that kind of marketing for something like a battery. The campaign was successful for sure, but the problem is that they actually managed to advertise their competitor in the battery field. Duracell released a report after the Energizer Bunny first aired showing that their profits had actually doubled at that time because people thought that the bunny was advertising Duracell. In fact, it worked so well that Duracell uses a bunny as their mascot now, which you may have seen. While the company didn't lose money directly, the drastic drop in sales and the money wasted on promoting your competitor is enough of a burn to make sure that they're more careful next time. Number 5. Tesco and Math Tesco is praised for being a fairly cheap place to shop in the UK, but after this marketing fail you might think that it's because they're just really bad at math. Back in 2011, Tesco decided to do a special little promotion to outdo their competitor Asda. Basically it was the whole, we will refund you twice the difference if our competitor's item is cheaper. Tesco sadly forgot that people can count and customers got savvy by only buying items that were on sale at Asda. So they would go to Tesco's, buy the same items on sale at Asda, and then after checking out, they'd request double the difference by referring to Asda's website. For example, one shopper spent 126 pounds at Tesco on a shop that would have cost 81 at Asda and claimed a 90 pound voucher. Therefore, they essentially paid 36 pounds for all that shopping. You can see that doing this multiple times would save you a whole lot of money at the expense of Tesco. While this was a monetary and marketing catastrophe for Tesco, you have to give them props. They actually made a promotion that ended up being great for their customers. Number 4. Oprah and KFC We all know that Oprah is the omnipotent master of our destinies, so when she offered people a free KFC two-piece meal, we all jumped. So why was it such a catastrophe? Well, you can imagine that KFC was not all that pleased when people managed to print out over 10 million free food coupons from Oprah's website. During the time of the promotion, KFC gave away over 40 million worth of free food and probably paid Oprah a ridiculous amount to do the promotion for them. Needless to say, KFC will not be contacting her anytime soon. Number three, bananas for stereo. Now before I start, this one didn't cost a lot of money, but it was really stupid on the marketing side. It was the same old formula, savvy customer plus dumb exchange equals prize. Silo, a chain of electronic stores, decided that the dumb exchange item would be bananas and the prize would be a stereo. Imagine their surprise when, after the whole thing settled, they ended up with 11,000 bananas in their warehouse and a lot of stereos given away for around $40. These guys ended up being nice and donated all the bananas to the local zoo, but it kind of makes you think how stoned they had to be to come up with the idea in the first place. Number 2. McDonald's Olympics I do admit that pairing McDonald's and something that requires you to be physically fit is a bit weird, but it gets weirder fairly quickly. During the Summer Olympics of 84, McDonald's had a catchy slogan, if the US wins, you win. They included a ticket you could scratch on every meal and customers would win a Big Mac for gold, french fries for silver, and a Coca-Cola for a bronze medal in the event that was on the ticket. Trouble is, since the Soviets boycotted the Olympics, the US ended up with 83 gold medals, 61 silvers, and 30 bronze. Basically, McDonald's lost a huge sum of money because the Russians were too lazy to compete. It seems that Russia can screw American businesses even without the hackers. Number 1. Number Fever Riddle me this, what happens when you overestimate the power of numbers? If your answer was extreme riots and lawsuits, you probably work for Pepsi. In 1992, Pepsi had their number fever promotion and promised to give away 1 million pesos, the equivalent to 40,000 US dollars, to one lucky person with the right number on their bottle cap. 
Trouble is, they had accidentally printed the winning number, 349, on 800,000 caps due to an oversight in the manufacturing process. Consequently, they accidentally promised to give away a total of 55 billion in today's dollars. And so, people just calmly understood the mistake and caused no trouble. Nah, I'm kidding. Thousands of Filipinos began rioting on the streets, demanding that Pepsi pay them their rightful prize, which now totaled in the millions. People even filed 689 civil suits and more than 5,200 criminal cases for fraud and deception. However, Pepsi wasn't entirely at fault. It is believed this marketing fail was caused by DG Consultors, a Mexican consulting firm that Pepsi had hired to randomly pre-select the winning numbers. They were clearly instructed not to make the number 349 a winner, but they clearly didn't get the memo. Obviously, with such a costly mistake, Pepsi couldn't afford to pay everyone what they promised and instead settled on giving just under $2,000 to each winner, instead of the promised $40,000. Regardless, Pepsi ended up paying closer to $10 million for the whole campaign rather than their original budget of $2 million. Looking at the whole list now, a lot of these things wouldn't have happened if some people just did their job properly. Such a shame. Which mistake did you think was the worst? Or do you know of any others that rivaled them in terms of stupidity? Let me know in the comments down below, and thanks for watching.